friends, and welcome to Trucking Along with Kiersey. That's me, your positive voice in trucking. I got a couple questions asked of me about whether CDL schools should be local, is it better to go to company-sponsored training, and that sort of thing. So I'm going to give you my opinion, and yes, it is a little biased because I went to company-sponsored school, but I'm going to explain to you why. So come on back to me, and we'll get started. Okay, number one, why I think company sponsored schooling is better because you have no distractions other than to learn what is required to pass your CDL. You don't have your kids screaming, you don't have your wife, you don't have your husband, they're not, you know, nobody, you're not worried about people being sick or, or arguing about money or whatever. You're not going to work, okay? Just the fatigue of being to work all day, like eight, 10, 12 hours, who knows, and then having to go to, to a truck school at night for three to four hours at night. And some of these people are going five times a week. Some are only going on weekends. If you only go on weekends, you're not retaining the information. You're not getting enough practice. It's too far of a space in between. And if you're going every night, although you might be getting the practice, are you really comprehending it? Because, you know, you're exhausted. So that's one aspect of it for me, okay? Another aspect is that the CDL schools will accept people and take your money that companies won't hire. So you could go to a CDL school and spend five to $10,000 for CDL school, get out and not be able to find a job. Because nobody told you that you were gonna have a problem finding uh, a job where you have a felony on your record, or the DUI on your record, or believe it or not, medications. Legal prescribed medications are often not accepted from some of these companies. Prime can be really strict on certain medications, especially when it comes to like antidepressants or anti-anxiety. I know quite a few, few people that took trazodone for sleep. And it's not narcotic, but it is listed as an anti-anxiety. So they came to Prime and then they were sent home. They got their CDL from a CDL school, but they were sent home and they were told if you swap to a different drug that we do approve on our list, then we'll talk about bringing you back. But you have to be on some other drug and you have to be stable for 30 days. So these are some of the things that happen that people don't talk about, like high blood pressure. Your school's doctor may have let you go with a little bit higher blood pressure, but the company you want might have a different requirement. And then what happens is the longer it takes for you to get a job, the less your CDL certificate is worth, the less your training certificate is worth. So just what I said about you're going to school on the weekends, you're not retaining that information all week. Well, it goes the same way that after you get your CDL, it might be really hard for you to find a job because if you find after two months of searching and somebody won't accept that DUI or that accident or another one is traffic tickets, 15 miles per hour speeding tickets, a lot of people just go, oh, it was just one. It's just one in 20 years. Okay, but it's reckless driving. And all of the companies that train, the majority of them are self-insured. So they have to trust you to not kill anybody. They have to trust you with their product, with their equipment. So these are some of the things that the mistakes you may have made in the past shows your judgment and your character. And it might not sound fair, but that's what happens. So, you know, keep in mind that just because the CDL school accepted you does not mean you're gonna get a job. And then all that money is wasted, then guess what happens? Then if you do find a company that's willing to accept you, 
they expect you to go through training all over again and sign that year contract with them anyway because now it's been too long you've been out of a truck too long you have to get retrained and this is the reality that some people don't want to understand something else with CDL schools is that they may charge you if you fail they may only allow you to test once. So if you fail, they may say, okay, well, we're gonna charge you for more backing practice. We're gonna charge you for more road time. We're gonna charge you to borrow our truck to go retest. So you could be paying hundreds to an extra thousand dollars just, you know, because you didn't do as well. And did you not do as well because you were distracted by the family? Did you not do as well because you were distracted by work all, and working all day and you were ex, ex, tired and fatigued? You know, at Prime we do things a little bit differently than some of the other companies. Prime, Will Trans, Jim Palmer. We all put students with their permits out in the trucks. I drove over almost 10,000 miles with my permit in three weeks before I went and tested it for my exam. Some companies are, some actual training companies, that's what they're giving their, their trainees before they go out, before they go solo. So I had as much driving experience over mountains, through hills, in fog, in rain, at night, at morning, through cities, as what some of these people are getting at certain companies, you know, it might be a company-sponsored school, but they might go to a local type of school where they have other students with them. With my company, it's one-on-one -on -one training, so you go out, you make deliveries, and then you come back and you test. So it's like you're thrown into the over the road type of trucking experience right away. You can't get that type of experience at a local school. I'm sorry. Put me up against anybody, even at that time. I drove through fog, I drove through rain, I drove through so much that I was comfortable when I tested. I did fail and you could go watch that story, but that was more about me not being adjusted to the truck that I was driving rather than me not having the ability to do it. I had the ability and I wasn't fearful either. Um, some people are really fearful and all that experience that I had got me past that. Another thing is a, most company sponsored schools that I know of, you pay nothing up front. Okay, I think Swift, they take a portion out of your check the first year, then as you go beyond and you stay more than that, they reimburse you what, they, what you paid out. So once you get to the two year point, you paid nothing, okay? I paid nothing. There is a bug on my camera. Bugs, sorry. I paid absolutely nothing. I paid $100 up front and it was like 55 bucks to get my permit in Missouri, which now the Missouri law is you have to do that at home. So you would do that anyway at home. You're not paying prime or anything like that. Um, so, you know, as long as you stay the year, I had nothing come out of my pay. That's, that's you know, it's insane when I think about these people are paying like nine and ten thousand dollars. They're taking out loans, and then some of them aren't even getting jobs, and they're stuck with that debt. They're just stuck with it. And you could say to me, "Well, yeah, but my loan, I think at the time was like four thousand dollars or somewhere in there. I don't remember." But okay, I didn't take a loan. I signed a contract, and it basically basically said. You don't pay anything unless you quit before your first year or you get fired before your first year. That's what it said. So all I had to do was my job and stay a year. And a year is nothing. It flies by, especially out here. I hardly ever know what freaking day of the week it is. I always know what day I deliver and pick up, but I don't know one day from the next. It's really crazy. Um, and people think that they're just gonna, oh, I wanna be a free agent. Oh, they're not gonna tell me where to go. I can go anywhere you want. Guess what? Not true, okay? If you bounce from company to company to company, after a while what happens is the better paying companies don't want you. The reason they don't want you is you don't stay. 
you haven't established yourself and you know if you're somebody that did sign a contract at a school like you know a company like prime or, or swift or cfi or i could name a thousand of them right if you did do that and then you reneged on your contract you have no word you have no honor you have no integrity why would anybody want to hire you after that you know and a lot of people that go to local schools the reasoning is that they want to go local not everybody wants to go local so a lot of competition for local so if i decided i wanted to go local there might only be a handful of jobs there might be two jobs at that local company okay it's two jobs at a local company and me and my trainee my last trainee that got off that just has he'll just have a year next month okay um both of us would get hired that local job before you would you have no experience why should they hire you not to mention the fact that one of the reasons why they want so much experience is because the insurance is very costly for a new driver so most of the mega carriers are self-insured they're self-insured because the insurance is really expensive so um you know i just i hate when people they they have these dreams and these expectations and then they'll say well it didn't work out and now i'm stuck with this this student loan and you know i went to work for this one company and i hated it so i left and i was only there a month and i didn't get the tuition reimbursement so now i'm stuck and i don't have a job and and i can't find another company that will hire me because i had an accident and that first company overlooked that accident and now nobody else will um it just it can be a repeat type of cycle where you downward spiral and it's like really like and another thing is that if you look through local jobs those desirable jobs that you want so much a lot of them will say cannot have more than three jobs in five years or not have more than two jobs in three years that means okay you left the one company after a month or two and now you went to the second one you might be stuck there for two two and a half years just to get that qualified just to be qualified for the job that you really wanted at home like these are things that you have to think about when it comes to company sponsored versus cdl school and a lot of times the cdl schools are not going to be honest with you they're not going to be truthful with you um i went i i went to a cdl school and inquired a few things i had a friend that went to a local cdl school he and i were going to go to the same one and it turned out that i just i just felt like it was a used car salesman that's what i felt like and anybody that knows me knows that i know so much about cars that i usually scare them i got ticked off because they were treating me like a dumb woman and i left and then my friend wound up going to visit that same cdl school and i was already at prime i was out already had my permit was out on the road and the recruiter from that school sat there and told him that prime was a terrible company that i was lying there was no way i was out on the road there was no way i was driving so i took a picture of my qualcomm with all my miles four or five hundred miles a day with my permit and sent it to him and said look i took the written exam on tuesday and i was on a truck saturday i was on the road saturday and three months later he was still doing pre-trip by the time he did pre-trip i was by the time he tested i was already through my my permit phase through my training phase i already tested i was through my training phase and i was already getting my truck to go solo before he even got his driver's license, his CDL license. So, and, you know, it's kind of like, maybe that was okay for him, that's what he wanted, but if you want to get out and make money faster, sometimes it's actually better to go through the company sponsor program. I mean, the decision is yours, 
I just want to plant these things into your head so that you can make a rational decision with all the facts. Okay, I know some, somebody just posted on truckingtruth.com, well, I'm just going to go local, then I'm going to go LTL. Okay, that's a desirable job. That's hard. That's hard to get. You know, I know drivers that even after a year or two of driving, they were turned down for them. It's not saying it's impossible. And depending on where you live, there may be more opportunities than others, but you know, it goes back to unrealistic expectations that we talk about on truckingtruth.com all the time. And it's kind of like, well, you know, you can't always get what you want. And some people, they don't want to like start here and work up. They don't want to like crawl before they can walk or run. They just want to like run and take off. And then when they fall, they come back to the forum and they'll ask us questions about like, well, how do I fix it? Well, you can't fix it now. That's why we told you earlier, you know, like there was somebody who failed a drug test, lied about it, and then couldn't understand why nobody would hire her. She got caught on the application lying about failing a drug test. And she was rejected by Prime. When she went to go apply at other companies, they said, oh no, you went to orientation at Prime. Guess what? No, we're sending you home. We don't want you. So she wound up going to a, a much lower paying school, paying company, and she bounced around from place to place, and I haven't heard anything from her since. So my guess is that she didn't really make it. And I hate to see people like that. It's just, it's heartbreaking to me because if they just give a year, it's really not that long. I can't believe I've been out here four years already. That's insane to me, but it's been, as a matter of fact, it was four years I got on the bus on September 19th. That's what, four years, September 19th was when I got on the bus. I got the prime um, September 21st, I think which I think is today's date. Is that today? Yeah, it's today. So four years ago today was my first class at Prime. And my intention was a year. It goes by so fast, it's crazy. So don't let things hold you back. If it's a time thing, don't let it hold you back. If it's a money thing, you know, try to save up. A lot of these companies, they pay for your transportation, and that's something else. People think that you need to live near the terminal at a company to go to their company-sponsored schools. That's not true. I don't even live near the terminal I'm dispatched out of. Because I'm over the road, you know, I live in New Jersey. I grew up in New Jersey, but I'm dispatched out of Missouri. It doesn't matter. I can use any of the terminals I want and go through any time I want, but I didn't, when I went to Missouri, you know, I was there for a few days for orientation and then that was it, I was out on the road. So you don't need to live by the school. Most of these companies, they'll put you in a hotel, they'll give you money for food. Um, like at Prime, they advance you $200 a week and that's to cover your food expenses out on the road. It's not to help you with your bills at home. And People are told that, so it, it is a, an advance though. You do have to pay that back once you get hired. They'll take it out in $25 a week increments. So I hope that helped you. And if you think I'm wrong, then comment below and you tell me why CDL schools are better, local CDL schools are better. Um, <clears throat> and uh, like, comment, subscribe, share, all that good stuff, you know what to do. And I hope to see you out here, Chuck, 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 and along.